Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome back to the great experiments in psychology and in this week as I have said earlier, we are going to discuss about the different case studies and experiments in clinical and health psychology. So, today's uh, section, in today's section we are going to discuss about the boy who could not stop washing and this is about the experience and treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, obsessive compulsive disorder is a very common psychiatric illness that has been prevalent since long times and uh, we have most of us are aware of this and we are familiar with the term of obsessions as also compulsive behavior. But why is this case study important? This is important because this uh, with this book on the boy who could not stop washing by Judith Rappaport in 1989, the case of OCD as a psychiatric illness and that could be treated was brought into high in an, into light it, that is into the public domain. So, previously it was more focused within the psychiatric and the clinical sci sci circles, but this is the first time it was brought into the public domain and definitely it attracted a lot of um, uh, coverage and it also uh, brought in several cases of OCD uh, who realized that it could be treated and uh, they started visiting the clinicians. So, I thought it would be good to introduce this case. Now, this uh, rapport talks about one, one boy who is named Charles who is at the age of 14 and he was spending at least 3 hours per day in the shower and he had been doing this for years, he could not stop himself, he just had to do it. So, Judith Rappaport introduced this case study in her 1989 book, The Boy Who Could not Stop Washing and this is now considered a psychology classic and is one of the first ones to raise the topic of OCD and brought it into public domain. Now, uh, what is OCD? So, most of us are uh, as I said familiar with the term obsession and also compulsive behavior. Now, obsession is a recurrent thought. So, that is one thought that is constantly coming in one's brain and he that is that is something that uh, that is affecting him that is disturbing his other thought process and impairing his uh, social uh, lifestyle. So, uh, so these could be generally these could be related to uh, dirt, could be related to some other unpleasant thoughts like somebody dying at home or uh, uh, you know something something which is unpleasant that is going to happen. Now, or it could be in the form of images or impulses. So, we often come across uh, if you look at old uh, psychology uh, books, you will see especially abnormal psychology books, you will come across uh, cases where it is reported that the individual is feeling that he or she may just ta want to kill his children. So, uh, that could be an impulse and that this thought that I may harm my children many times is uh, brings about the compulsive behavior of hiding away, removing all the knives and sharp instruments, so that one does not get the urge to harm somebody. Now, now, so basically coming back to obsessions, obsessions are recurrent thoughts and these thoughts or unwanted ideas, images or impulses occur over and over again in an individual's head. So, they could be as I mentioned uh, related to harm that will come to themselves or to their loved ones or uh, an unreasonable fear of contamination or disease or an excessive need to do things perfectly. So, just to give an example of an obsessive thought, if I start thinking that this table is dirty. So, this is a thought. So, what makes this an obsessive thought? So, 
the moment I get this thought that this table is dirty, the immediate compulsive act or the action that fo follows this thought is I need to clean it. So, if I clean it once and this thought is removed from my mind and I am focusing, I am able to focus on other things, then I do not have an obsessive trait or this thought is not an obsessive thought and I do not need to follow it with the compulsive behavior of washing this place or cleaning this place. But, if after some time while I am talking to you, if the thought recurs again that oh no this place is still dirty and again the compulsive act is followed of cleaning this place, then definitely I have an OCD or obsessive compulsive behavioral pattern. So, this thought that is that is why the, the feature of the classical feature of the obsessive thought is it has to happen, it has to occur in one's head recurrently. Now, and it wants then why is it followed by the compulsive behavior? The compulsive behavior reduces the thought or reduces the anxiety following the thought for some time, but why is it compulsive? It is because the individual is compelled to act on the thought. So, because there is this thought that this is dirty, I am compelled to clean it to reduce that thought of this place being contaminated or dirty. So, this recurrent thought actually is reduced or this anxiety behind this recurrent thought is reduced by the compulsive behavior. So, generally that is why we see that obsessive thoughts are followed by compulsive behavior. Now, getting back to Charles, Charles displayed such disturbing thoughts regarding the need to wash himself almost continuously. And we spoke about compulsive behaviors right now. So, there are some other compulsive behaviors that are common other than washing and cleaning. The other which is most common is that of symmetry. So, if this, this does not seem uh, properly aligned with the table, you will often come across people who say that um, I, I, when this picture is not in order, when, not, when it is not aligned, I have a problem. So, I need to put it in order, but this is not obsessive uh, disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder it becomes a disorder, we call it a disorder, when the individual's thought is so disturbing, the thought of maintaining symmetry is so disturbing or the act of maintaining symmetry is so disturbing that it uh, impairs other behavioral patterns. So, I have come across a patient who had to constantly align his keyboard with the monitor. So, if the keyboard, the moment he pressed a key, he felt that the keyboard is not aligned with the monitor and he would need to check it again, put it in uh, symmetry and then start working. So, just imagine how much time he would require to do a task properly. Many a times I have come across students who have to, who have this urge of cancelling the last word they have written or maybe cancelling some um, one or two words as they keep writing. So, as they feel if I do not do this, then something may go wrong in my house today. Somebody may die or maybe you know thoughts like somebody may be harmed. It could be thoughts like I am going to fail if I do not cut this, cancel this word. So, the, the whole act of writing is getting delayed. So, this is again a compulsive act. Now, um, another uh, a common very common compulsive act is that of counting and there are many uh, people who have to uh, constantly count. Uh, I will count 3, after 3 I will go over here or maybe you know if I am going to a, uh, if I see a temple on the road then I need to count 7 times and then I can move ahead. So, uh, these are some of the common things that we see in OCD. And for many years OCD was thought of as a rare disease, because people with OCD hardly seek treat, sought treatment. So, most of the times we did not get cases reporting of OCD and that led to a lot of underestimates about the disease. Now, Rappaport's book 
helped to uncover the scale of the problem. And there were several, as I mentioned earlier, that there were several people who started reporting to the clinics with complaints of OCD. Because before then, also they did not realize that this was an Ill illness that could be treated. And it is now estimated that approximately 1.1 to 1.8 percent of the population suffer from OCD. And this has been reported by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders uh, in uh, 2013. And it is also seen that females are affected at a slightly higher rate than males in adulthood, although males are more commonly affected in childhood. So, that brings us to Charles again. So, Charles was an ideal case study into OCD, because he displayed many of the classical symptoms of OCD. And what were they? They were uh, during typically OCD symptoms emerged during the teenage years and Charles as we know was only 14 years of age. And uh, of course, it is often seen that it also happens earlier. Now, how did it start with Charles? So, when Charles was in school, he was enthusiastic in chemistry and biology and around age 12, he suddenly started to wash compulsively. And there appeared to be no reason why this behavior started, but washing took, took up more time of his day. Now, it started increasing. So, with time you will also see in other cases of OCD that initially it starts with a lesser amount of time, with, with, but with every passing day the amount of uh, action or the amount of if it is washing behavior, the compulsive behavior starts uh, increasing and it actually covers up, it, it becomes all encompassing and affects all the other aspects of living. In fact, most of the family uh, is also affected by OCD and uh, the, the reason being that the caregivers in the family or uh, the other uh, members of the family also need to abide by certain rules, especially if it is a, a case of uh, count, um, washing uh, that is a fear of contamination, then mostly the others also need to maintain are compelled to maintain uh, cleanliness as per the regimentation of the patient. And uh, this on the other hand actually increases the OC features, obsessive compulsive features in the patient. So, um, this is the diagnostic criteria of OCD and uh, as per DSM 5 given in 2013. And uh, we see that some of the uh, OC, OCD patients have good insight, good or fair insight and some have a very poor insight. So, individuals suffering from OCD who have a good insight that is who are aware that this is a problem and they need to deal with it rather than uh, who are comfortable with the problem and they do not find it a problem at all. Th people who have insight, they are uh, their prognosis or their uh, treatment um, uh, outcome is better as compared to patients who have poor insight. So, um, some of the other uh, features that are very common with OCD is magical thinking and ambivalence. So, uh, magical thinking is uh, it is uh, generally it is related to something that will happen I do not know how. So, it is uh, it is like if I as I was mentioning about a boy who had to cancel his uh, it is one of the people I saw who had to cancel the words as he uh, progressed. Uh, while writing something, thought that there is something going to go wrong at my home. If I do not cancel this word, my mother will die. Now, why is this thought? Uh, how is it going to happen? If you ask him, he would say that I do not know about that, but something bad is going to happen. I know that. So, my mother is really going to die. So, I cannot take that chance. So, I need to cancel it. So, just imagine the amount of anxiety that is created by the thought that um, if I do not do this behavior, this might happen. So, who is going to take a chance? And most of the times, these magical thoughts seem so real that they would often, um, the, the individual suffering from OCD would often be compelled to carry out the action. Now, um, as uh, now coming back to Charles again, hmm, most like most other OCD sufferers, 
they in their own way they try to stop the obsessive thoughts and prevent their compulsive actions and coming to Charles, Charles also tried to do it and he was he could keep the symptoms under control during the time he was at school. But over some time over the months as it progressed it was seen that his resistance weakened and even in school time he started spending most of the time washing. So, Charles was forced to leave school because he was spending so much time of the day washing and his washing ritual always followed the same pattern. If you come across uh, an OCD patient who has this fear of contamination and spends a lot of time washing his hands or uh, especially if you if he's gone to the uh, toilet then you will see that there is a ritual that is followed so uh, several times if if the person is washing his hand like this and this so there is a an idiosyncratic ritual. So, each individual has his or her, her own ritual. Uh, another example that I can cite is a very common thing in OCD patients that uh, they have a ritual with uh, touching while walking. So, I whenever I am going to cross this room one of my patients told me I have to touch the edge of the table. So, this I have to touch and then with my right hand I have to touch another corner. So, these are idiosyncratic individualistic rituals that are part of that thought pattern of OCD. And Charles would also fo follow his own ritualistic pattern of washing his hand and he would hold the soap under the water spray for one minute of his uh, in his right hand and then out of the one uh, water for one minute in his left hand and he would. So, he also had to wash the soap after washing his hand. So, this this whole ritual took up more than an hour and after washing for about 3 hours he would spend around 2 hours to get dressed. So, imagine the amount of time that is being taken by Charles and how it was actually impairing his social life. So, his behavior was not only affecting him, but also affecting other people's lives especially his mother's. She, at first, she was she discouraged his strange washing rituals, but later not wanting to see his misery helped him by obsessively cleaning items in the ha house, so that it might not contaminate him. Uh, you know just uh, this brings in memory of another uh, case that I saw, uh, where the individual uh, would not prefer anybody uh, wearing uh, the room slippers into the bedroom. So, there was a separate set of slippers for the whole family. This was the father that I was seeing. So, when for all the other members of the family, they had a separate pair of slippers just for the bedroom, a particular bedroom where he slept. So, if anybody had to get into the room, they would have to keep their house slippers, home slippers outside that room and wear another pair of slippers when he would when they would get inside the room. And if God forbid anybody forgot and by chance entered, then he would have to clean himself, wash the slippers, wash other other slippers and also wash the room. So, just imagine the amount of effort that people would need to go through and amount of painstaking ritualistic behavior that the others in the family are also induced to take to keep the individual, the individual patient that is um, satisfied actually you know to keep the anxiety down. But most of the times what happens is instead of bringing the anxiety down, so um, this helpful behavior would also become a part of the ritualistic pattern. And the next day or maybe days later what would happen is new ritualistic patterns would develop and this would add on to the misery of the household. And uh, as with Charles mother, she started cleaning everything that he might touch in the house with alcohol and stop people from entering the house with their germs. So, they would need to take a bath outside you know before immediately getting in, so that the germs were not contaminating the household. Charles father was not really accustomed to these behaviors and not what he planning to get accustomed and so he spent most of his time at work. So, as I was talking about having an insight into the problem, uh, 
Rappaport reports that Charles was a very easy going boy with a friendly and playful disposition and he realized that he had a problem. So, the prognosis was better. So, as I was talking about the treatment outcome and he willingly sought Rappaport's help since he was aware of his OCD and wished to overcome it. Many times people suffering from OCD for a long time do not wish to overcome it, especially people with having washing mania. So, people with fear of contamination who spend most of the time washing are uh, generally uh, many a times they do not and have been uh, doing this for a long long time which has become a part of their uh, daily habit uh, do not wish to change their behavior. And you will see that these people will say that uh, I am doing fine um, and ok I am just a little uh, you know I, I am a little cleaner the, as compared to others. I prefer a disciplined life and I prefer uh, cleaning up things rather than um, actually uh, you know remaining dirty. So, I do not think I have a problem. People who are actually complaining about me having a problem are the dirty ones and they have a problem. So, this is also a very common pattern that you get to see with uh, long term OCD patients with very poor insight. But Charles was one with better insight and Rappaport proposed to study Charles brains using an EEG and he actually, uh, she actually wished to uh, record the um, uh, EEG pattern. Unfortunately, this increased Charles OC features. Why? Because you know those days uh, there were no dry electrodes. So, the electrodes needed to be um, uh, for getting an electroencephalogram of the brain, the electrodes needed to be pasted with a sticky uh, paste and that made Charles more irksome and he started feeling that uh, you know that, that made him feel more anxious and uh, dirty. So, that uh, could not be done. Now, uh, Rappaport tried to explore how uh, Charles developed his OCD. Charles felt that he was compelled to do something by uh, do so by something inside him. So, he it was not that he was having auditory hallucinations or delusions and he did not hear voices telling him to do it, but he felt some internal and insistent sense of having to wash compulsively. And he was aware that uh, this behavior was not right and it might appear crazy to people, but he was not crazy. He felt that and like many OCD features, Charles showed insight into his condition. He recognized that is, he recognized that his obsessions and compulsions were not normal behavior. So, they were quite ridiculous, but it is just that he could not help himself and he just had to wash. So, he that is how uh, Judith Rappaport got the title of her book saying he the boy who could not stop washing. So, he actually was a boy who just could not stop it. So, when asked when Rappaport uh, tried to explore what would happen if he did not wash, he believed that he might become sick or that it would they would it would bring a bad luck if he stopped washing. And uh, as I was talking of magical thinking just before some time, when explored further most of the times you know such patients are not able to tell you what exactly might go wrong. So, just like uh, you know uh, Charles was talking about bad luck would follow, uh, he could not explain how this compulsion had started and why would bad luck follow. So, there was you know there was no link between the thought between the magical thinking and the compulsive behavior or uh, you know a rationale for it rather there was definitely a link uh, with the behavior because the behavior actually reduced the magical thought, but there was no real link. So, if how can uh, this be rationally explained if you wash how will bad luck not follow he was not able to say that. So, there have been uh, several causes that have been looked into uh, as responsible for creating OCD and most of them point towards a biological reason and uh, this is. Uh, so, therefore, uh, since it is uh, many because a neurobiological reason being identified uh, drugs can be really helpful for treating OCD.
And Charles was actually uh, treated with a drug, we will see that, but uh, he that was anaphranil and it was an SSRI. So, that is a specific uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor, but um, he developed a tolerance towards the drug and drug and that had to be um, unfortunately, the positive response that he was uh, giving initially that started decreasing. Now, um, another of the cause uh, that is uh, seen is uh, learning behavior. Now, can OCD be learned? So, several times uh, this, uh, there are several learning theories that have uh, shown that uh, OC features can be uh, actually modeled. So, if there is a person who is uh, having OC obsessive features at home, so that may it may be modeled and inculcated within the human being to uh, keep things as symmetry or uh, keep things clean and severe amount of washing is followed. Now, this behavior one of the uh, reasons is an environmental reason and you will see that there are several cultures who also follow uh, these um, uh, um, uh, ritualistic behaviors as a part of the cultural, um, cultural identity. So, uh, individuals developing uh, say that was one of the reasons why very few patients even today are reported with uh, cases of OCD, especially in India. So, uh, like you will see that in India there are many patients who have this habit of uh, especially women at homes having a habit of keeping things clean and that is so culturally viable and that is so um, you know acceptable within the society that uh, she is ok, it is just that she is she loves keeping things clean that several times OCD gets remains untreated unless it uh, increases to such a proportion that it is impairing all the other aspects of life and also affecting others life. So, that is the disorder is not diagnosed till it has already progressed a long way. So, uh, and uh, seeing the brain scan of patients with OCD, it has uh, it is observed that the pattern of brain activity are different from the people who do not have any psychiatric disorder. And it that generally what it shows is the obsessive compulsive disorder patients ha have significantly less white matter, but significantly greater general total cerebral cortex as compared to other uh, normal participants and that also points towards a neurobiological cause of OCD. So, as I mentioned earlier uh, one of the treatment possibilities is using a drug that is affecting the neurotransmitter serotonin and it uh, this was uh, basically used with Charles as well. And another uh, treatment uh, pattern treat therapeutic uh, regimen that is followed with obsessive compulsive disorder is behavior therapy and specially exposure and response prevention. And uh, exposure and response prevention actually addresses uh, the learning theory. So, it practices that if you uh, get the individual exposed to if I am talking of fear of contamination. So, getting exposed to the dirt but not allowing the person to clean the place. So, that with time the uh, amount of anxiety that is caused by looking at the dirt will reduce and it will also break this um, pattern of this pairing of we spoke about classical conditioning and pairing in the previous session. So, here this would also break the pattern between seeing dirt and cleaning behavior. So, the moment I see or another example, the moment I see something is crooked, the habit of immediately putting it into symmetry. So, or bringing an alignment. So, this would actually, so there is an exposure to the unpleasant um, material or the stimulus that would create the thought, but 
stopping the compulsive behavior from taking place to break the pairing of the obsessive thought and the compulsive behavior. So, this has um, uh, it has been seen that behavior therapy is really helpful for patients, but unfortunately most of the times the patients drop out of therapy especially behavior therapy uh, free, pretty frequently. One of the reasons being that it also takes a lot of uh, will to and this um, what should I say this resistance uh, that you face from your own self to uh, stop this uh, new uh, pattern developing this new pattern of behavior that is this changed way of behaving to circumstance. It is quite easy to uh, clean the place if I feel this is dirty rather than resisting and not cleaning the place because that would cause more anxiety. So, many of the patients uh, more often than not they drop out of therapy because of this. Another uh, type of uh, therapy that has been um, followed with OCD and which really gives yields good results is cognitive behavior therapy, where uh, cognition is addressed and as the term suggests that along with behavior therapy, uh, this uh, type of therapy focuses on the thoughts and beliefs. So, that is related to the obsession. So, if I uh, obsession and compulsive thought primarily say uh, like if I do not um, uh, cancel this word, then somebody might uh, die at home. So, the magical thinking is challenged. So, the individual is taught to challenge his own belief patterns and along with that the behavior therapy principles are followed. So, of course, CBT was not followed with Charles, but uh, BT behavior therapy and primarily uh, uh, medication was followed. So, uh, why have we discussed this case today? Because uh, this is this is not an experiment, but this is a case study that uh, uh, Judith Rappaport reported in her book, uh, The Boy Who Could not Stop Washing. And this brought about this is an important turning point for psychiatry, where you know OCD cases started being reported. And uh, to understand the how important it is to report cases, we see that even a single case can make such an important difference. And um, Charles showed the classic symptoms of OCD and by actively seeking help, he was put on appropriate treatment program that helped to reduce many of his symptoms. He was able to resume a normal life and this publication of this study boosted people to bring their, um, their problems to the clinics and that also that it this people suffering from OCD, people having OCD first and foremost they are suffering and this is an illness that can be treated. So, it really uh, brought in a lot of people to the clinics and it also increased the clinical psychology and psych psychiatry's knowledge of this disease. So, I thought it would be a good idea to introduce this. Thank you.